Welcome to the fifth episode of Meet the Gimp. The second show has reached more than 100 downloads, and the others are well beyond 60, and I think uh, this is worth the effort. And I left you in the last issue with this image here. Now I want to make the ship here pop a bit more out of the image. It has to become a little bit darker. And again, I want to do this with layers. Therefore, I first zoom into the image. I should learn these shortcuts. Here's the ship. And I just add a new layer. Click here on the new layer. I call it ship and I choose transparency. Now I want to reduce uh, the, the luminosity, the uh, all three color channels and for that I use again multiply, the mode multiply and now I uh, don't use a color but a gray to be multiplied with these colors here with these pixels here and then they should get darker. Okay, I choose the color selection mode and take here uh, the scales and here I reduce the value until I have a nice gray. Now I just pull this here over into the image and you see I've got a darker ship. Back to the layer dialog here and here I can now control the intensity of the effect with the slider here or switch it on and off. But I want to keep this effect only to the area of the ship and not in the rest of the image. And for that I use a layer mask. A layer mask defines where the layer should be visible and where it should be invisible. Just right click here, add layer mask and here I select a black uh, layer mask. Black means hide all the layer. White would mean show all the layer. And uh, this here is, uh, as a German teacher, I would say, das kriegen wir später. We'll cover that later. Okay, you see, the layer has no effect. I can switch it on and off. It's no effect. But I can paint into the layer mask or do uh, some other uh, edit, uh, use some other edit tools. Um, and when I do that, uh, it will reveal here uh, the image. And for that I use a white, uh, to switch to black and white, I use a white foreground color and a black uh, background color and I take the brush choose the options dialog, use a fairly big brush, 19 pixels a circle, and go back to the layers dialog and here I have to check if the layer mask or the layer itself is selected. Let me show you the effect. I switch back to a normal layer mode and you see the full layer here is invisible. I have the white pen here and now I write on the ship I draw on the ship and you see the gray layer is revealed. When I click on the layer itself and paint here you see the layer is changed. It is now not gray but it is white. I can go back here and with the X key change the colors for and background color and 
paint black into my layer mask and then the uh, the image is hidden. Okay, let me repair this here. Just Control and Z, Control and Z, and here we are back with the ship. Now I'm just filling the form of the ship with, sorry, wrong color, again X. I'm just filling the form of uh, the ship with white. Um, I think it's much easier to do a normal mode and uh, just look at uh, the gray ship. It's easier to uh, dif differentiate uh, from the background than uh, when uh, the layer mode is set to multiply. For the fine tuning, I reduce uh, the brush size. This is new in uh, the GIMP 2.3 point something and in the upcoming 2.4. It will be out in the next weeks, I've heard. And uh, there's, an, there's a feature, you can scale the, uh, the, the brush. With all these brushes where there is a, a small blue uh, triangle here. And you can do that either by this uh, slider here or um, in an easy way by just by uh, clicking, by, by typing the uh, square brackets. That is open, square bracket open, this is square bracket close. Uh, I wanted to use a small brush for the details. But I think uh, you can imagine what I have to do now here and uh, you don't have to look over my shoulder uh, for painting all these strokes here. Now I have painted all the area of the ship gray and I'll we do uh, the reverse now and uh, check for areas where I have over painted the edge. And I switch to multiply mode and reduce this a bit. I think I did a fairly good job. But I'm not so happy here with uh, the area of the swell in front of the ship. This here, this has uh, to go. And I switch with X the, the colors and paint the swell again in black. And so it doesn't get darker. Perhaps I'll have to uh, make it a bit brighter afterwards. Um, I don't know. I'll look at that when uh, the image is finished. Okay, let's check this here. In 100% zoom mode, I can get the ship a bit darker and brighter just by playing with the opacity. And I think I did a fairly good job, a fair good job by masking this. Uh, I think it's okay. But um, I think uh, the color is a bit off. And this is possible because the uh, color, this uh, goes, works after the color correction. And so I just drop this layer down below the colors, the color correction layers, and I think, yes, it's neutral now. The color change is gone. Okay. Um, I look at the whole image. Sorry. I look at the whole image. Shift, Control, E. And I think this is a fairly good balance between the background, the birds, and 
the ship. Perhaps I should go a bit down with uh, the intensity of the ship. Let's look better. I think this is best. When I compare it, this would be without darkening. This is with darkening, and the uh, birds are darker than the ship, what I, which I wanted. And I think this is a good result for this image. I can change it all the time, as with all the other layers too. I nearly forgot a thing. I painted the mask and uh, the layer mask with a very sharp edge. And when I zoom into the image, let me take the zoom tool, you see there is a hard uh, border here and I want to have it a little bit smoother because this may look a bit artificial, especially in a foggy scene. And for that I change back to the layer mask, editing the layer mask, or it's still edited, and choose filters and uh, blur. Choose a Gaussian blur and go to here. And I think this is uh, a good, the, the standard value perhaps a little bit less Oh, this looks good. Now I just blur the layer mask and you see this hard edge here is gone. Now I'm uh, ready to do uh, some corrective work with the image. When uh, you look at the image you see here is a bit of wood in the water and here is half a bird looking uh, cut off at the edge and I want to clone them out. And I again I choose the zoom tool, go in here and now I choose uh, the healing tool. It's uh, a bit like the clone tool uh, but it works better in this case here. Again, I have uh, the circle selected here, and you see I can't click into the image, so there happens nothing, and there is this forbidden sign in the mouse pointer. And I should set a new heal source. Okay, I do it with control and click. I think this is a good place to start. Control click and now I can just click here. Oh, that's a problem here. You know what? Which problem? I am working on the wrong layer. I, of course, I have to choose the background layer and I don't want to alter the background layer and so I make a copy of it. Background copy. Okay, let's try this again. And now I have made another mistake. My source was this gray layer above. And uh, of course I can undo this and just select the new source here. I'll like to, let's take that here. Let it just click here and it is gone. And for that I select this as the source and click and it's gone. Let me look at it in 100% mode. It looks quite good. Perhaps I should uh, have done it with a little bit greater brush and these two dots have still to go. Okay, again, healing tool with H. Select the source 
and click. I think that works. Yes. Now for the cut bird here. Um, for this, I zoom again into the image here. For this, I select the clone tool. It's uh, not so sophisticated like the healing tool and uh, in the old work, uh, an old uh, tool. This is brand new and uh, the Gimp and I really have no big experience with this. So, okay, the same procedure. I just click here as a source, click here, and I think this works. Back to 100%, perfect, this bird is gone. I think this image is ready now. I First I wanted to, uh, to make it a bit brighter. I can try that at the finish, um, the finishing steps, but uh, I think it works the way it is now. And I want to give it to a printer uh, to get a, a poster from it. And the printer uses an aspect ratio of 3 by 2. This is 2 by 1, and I have to change that. I can do this with image canvas size. I select this. The image is uh, 1868 pixels wide and the height is 945. And for uh, calculating this I have to use my calculator here. Okay. 1868 divided by 3 and multiplied with 2 equals 1245. I have to unchain uh, this here, unlock this, otherwise the width would change too. 1245. This is okay. The image would be fit on top and leave a uh, white strip on uh, the bottom. I don't resize the layers. Uh, just click here and now I have an image with a little bit of nothing on the bottom. I have to fill that up. For that I choose a new layer in white and use this layer and use this layer as the bottommost layer. This white area here on the bottom will be cut off later. But I can use it as a clue for the printer. The printer is simply in uh, a computer uh, with a print engine behind it and it has to get some clues how to handle this image. And this image is quite unusual. It is nearly monochromatic and it has not much contrast in it. I select a rectangle here just over the whole image select the blend tool, the gradient fill tool, set the gradient or it is set to black to white and now I just fill this here up with that gradient. Just click and draw a line and now I have the full color range in the black and white uh, area here from black to full white. I repeat this uh, with the colors. Choose in the uh, blend tool here. Choose in the blend tool a special gradient 
which is called full saturation. It's all the colors that we have. And again, fill this with this gradient. Now I have these uh, hints for the printer how to process the image. And if uh, the colors are off, I can always say here, this was supposed to be red and this was supposed to be green. I think this was it for today. And I hope uh, to see you around in the next week on Thursday when the next issue will be out. I'm very happy about the comments. They start to come in and if you want to tell me something about the show, please write an email to info at meetthegimp.org or leave a comment on the blog at meetthegimp.org or come to the forum of tipsfromthetopfloor.com and there is a link in my blog to that forum and there you can talk about this show. If you want to improve your photography and live in the United States and have a bit of time uh, in fall, just go to my uh, homepage, meetthegimp.org, and click on this button. It brings you to the Learning to See workshop by Chris Marquardt from Tips from the Top Floor, and he has uh, still some places left. Uh, just check it out, contact him. I think I can recommend that workshop. I heard very good stuff about it. Okay, this was it for today. See you around next Thursday and goodbye up to then. Welcome to the fifth episode.